and just sit back, but don't fall asleep. Uh, I ask you to uh, just open your eyes, open your ears, and mo most importantly, open your heart to what we're gonna do today. Uh, tradition has it that we uh, celebrate Christmas Eve by reading the gospel of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so very important that uh, the story will be continue to tell how Jesus was born and how he came about the meaning of why he was born on earth. So I encourage you to, to listen to the words of the scriptures, uh, to look at what we will tell you about who Jesus is and, and then celebrate with your heart how to sing the Christmas carols that we participate in. And then listen to the word of God today to see what he wants you to know about why Jesus is born for us today. So let us uh, welcome and worship our Lord uh, in some songs that the praise team has for us. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today at Staten Island Trans Christian Church. Thank you for coming to our Christmas service. Uh, let's stand up and worship the Lord together.
angels finish us his Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains belong? Let the gladsome tidings be rich in your heavy song.
Dear Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts to uh, celebrate together, Lord, the birth of your Son, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, who came to save us, who came to, as a, as a babe, Lord, as an innocent, sacrifice as an innocent lamb for our sins. Uh, Lord, you bore the shame on that cross for us. That cross is meant for us, but Lord, because of your grace, and mercy we have freedom in your name so lord once again let us put our uh, our lives in your hands let us put our hope in your in your hands lord as we sing joy to the world we join together as one uh, to proclaim uh, uh, your your majesty in this place and on this earth lord and in this sanctuary uh, lord may you lead us may you guide us with your holy spirit May you break us, Lord, and fill us up with yourself this, this afternoon. And we pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen. In this few moments, we're going to have uh, something that sometimes you see churches uh, observe is that we light uh, each candle that represents a significant meaning of what Christmas means. And they call it the Advent. And Advent is simply means the coming, coming of Jesus Christ. So we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ in uh, three parts. His history that came in history 2,000 years ago, where the prophets has been telling ab us about who Jesus is. We celebrate Jesus as the present, where today, Jesus can come to your heart when you hear and listen to God's word. And then we celebrate Jesus' future uh, when he comes back again. Why he has to come back, oh, well, that's a story we want to tell you, that between now and until he comes uh, come back again, it's very important for us to realize why we celebrate Christmas. So you're going to see in these few moments, brothers and sisters, family members, they're going to come up to light each candle. Uh, one candle represents hope. One candle represents peace. And then represents joy, love, and then Christ candle. So each uh, candle lighting will be a significant meaning for us. So I, I encourage you to, again, open your hearts, listen very attentively to these words and listen to the, the Bible scripture that will be read to you. And these are itself will tell us a lot of the truth of why Christmas is so important, why we as Christians celebrate Christmas. So let's uh, now let these family members and brothers and sisters come and present to us the hope, the peace, the love and joy of Christmas. First, we light the hope candle. It also represents the Messiah and also known as the prophecy candle. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. 
Hope looks to God and waits on him with a firm expectation that he will fulfill his promises. Israel had been beaten down by a succession of world powers, Babylon, Persia, the Greeks, and now Rome. In their distress, they called out, come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Yet in the cry, there is hope, a strong expectation that God will keep his promises to send a Messiah, a deliverer. 750 years before Jesus' birth, the prophet Isaiah predicted that a descendant of King David, Israel's greatest king, would come and reign again over the kingdom of God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. The hope is fulfilled on the first Christmas day when Jesus is born in Bethlehem, God's Savior sent to planet Earth to save us from our sins and deliver us from whatever oppresses us. People live in hope of one who can help them. Jesus is that person, present today by the Holy Spirit, to deliver us from any need. He is the one we hope for. Let us pray. Um, Father, we thank you um, and we praise you for um, the hope that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ, that our hope is not in vain, um, but you, Lord God, you are faithful um, and your promise that you will return, Lord Jesus, um, in fullness of glory, Lord God, and redeem all things to yourself, Lord God. You will fulfill this promise, Lord God. So we thank you for um, this season that we can continue to look to you um, and hope in you, Lord God. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. One of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Sudden, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. Bethlehem is a small village in Jesus' day. Its only claim to fame is that David had been born there a thousand years before. But this leapy town is destined for something great, so said the prophet Micah 800 years ago. Little did they know that in Bethlehem, God had chosen to perform his greatest miracle, the Incarnation. The miracle of God coming in a tiny man-child with only a manger for his bed. Jesus is sent by the Father to bring peace between God and man. We are caught up in struggle, strife, and sin. Jesus doesn't come, however, to smooth over our conflicts, nor does he come with armed might to force us to lay down our arms. Rather, he comes to die for the sins that lie at the heart of our rebellion against him. The Prince of Peace takes upon himself our sins and unrest. As Isaiah put it, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. To receive his peace this Christmas, come to him in surrender, and through this act of faith, receive his grace of forgiveness and shalom. Let's pray. Father, forgive us in our selfish, rebellious hearts. We open ourselves to you and invite you to come into us afresh and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen.
Did you know who were the first missionaries as Jesus was being born? Anyone? The shepherds, right? Shepherds were mine the flocks in the field, and then the angels came and announced this great joy that uh, Jesus, a Savior, will be born. And then the, sh the story tells us that the shepherds went down to Bethlehem and started spreading the good news. Good, they went, go tell on the mountain, the song that we sometimes sing, and they were excited to tell that Jesus was born. So how fitting it is that uh, we have missionaries that our church support and our church promote and so right now we have a few missionaries that just came back from mexico it's not bethlehem but it's mexico and uh daniel ma and his uh, friends uh, have been going to this uh, mission field for many years in his church in ohio so we now want to hear how the good news how they spread the gospel through means of physical labor or act of love or speaking of the good news. So our brother Daniel Ma will come and share a, a brief testimony and then the team will share a song for us. Um, so yeah, I, I was able to go to um, Monterrey, Mexico, and it's funny that um, Hester Khan mentioned to go tell it on the mountains because Monterrey is surrounded by mountains all around the city. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity to go and um, for God is working in my life um, and working in me to, to love him more and to want to serve him um, yeah, with, with everything that I have. And, um, I, th I think Christmas is about um, God's glory revealed in his son, and his son came to the earth um, uh, to, to show his great glory for, um, yeah, just for the world to see um, who he is and to reveal himself to the world. Um, and one of the theme verses for um, our mission trip was 1 Corinthians 2.2, uh, 2, and it says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And for me, um, in the cross, I just experienced God's love, um, seeing how much he loved the world, that he sent his only son, that he, he wouldn't want any of us to be separated from him, but he wanted us to come back to him and to worship him and to have a relationship with him. And while we were still sinners, he sent his son to be the sacrifice for, for us, and he, in his son, we have the forgiveness of sins, and in that, I see his, his amazing love, his, his wonderful love, and in Mexico, I was able to experience God's overwhelming love just as, as I was able to serve and worship him um, while I was with my friends and, and with um, the local um, uh, community there. Uh, it was just amazing to see um, just love um, yeah, just experiencing his love um, in every moment uh, while I was there and to have that, that sense of um, his love for me and to have that, that just wash over me. Um, yeah, it was just amazing and just so thankful that through the cross that I have the forgiveness of my sins. Like, I was a very rebellious kid. Um, it may not have been evident, but in my heart, um, it was, I was, felt like I was very far from God. But just throughout my whole life, um, he was faithful to me. He was my shepherd, and he, he was with me at all times. And I'm just so thankful for that and how he has led me um, throughout my entire life. And, yeah, I'm, I'm just so thankful that I got this chance to go uh, on this trip and to, to live out my life for, for him and for him alone. And, um, yeah, as, as you can see on, on the screen, um, we met up with a lot of young people in Mexico and it's just so exciting to see them all, like, so excited for um, uh, just living for the Lord and serving him and um, being able to travel with um, friends from my church and meeting up with um, another church uh, in Mexico. All, all the young people seeing them was very inspiring. Um, and just, yeah, I was, I was just so amazed at how, um, uh, uh, I guess, 
Jesus was able to unify us as one church and um, to worship him and to serve him. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I feel like everything um, in, in my life, I'm just so thankful for him, thankful for um, God's love and his mercy and his, his um, faithfulness in my life. And um, yeah, that he has, he has called me into fellowship with his son. And, um, and I think it goes back to that verse, um, to resolve to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And what that means for me is to um, follow after him uh, and his example. And so I'm, I'm thankful that we got to go and to um, follow the great commission is to go and make disciples of all nations. And in the picture, you can see so many nations represented. We have Mexican, um, white, Chinese, Korean, and African. It's just amazing to see all the nations coming together to worship the one true Lord of the world. Um, and yeah, I'm so I'm just, I'm just so thankful. Um, I have a lot more to share. Um, maybe we can uh, speak after, but at this time I want to invite um, our team up to share a song. Um, it's called Jesus Messiah, and it's, it's about um, our Messiah, our Savior. And I invite you all to stand and um, to sing with us to worship our Lord.
Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for Light the joy candle. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The shepherds hear the angel's proclamation and indeed are filled with both awe and joy. They are mere shepherds, considered by some as the lowest of the low. But the angel comes to them, no one else but to them, and gives them the news of momentous event, the birth of the Messiah. Filled with, the joy, filled with joy, they rush down the hills into the town, find the stable and manger, and kneel before the Christ child. Joy is an emotion of exaltation that comes from a new realization, an event of blessing, a state of blessedness. And surely the shepherds feel that. But the years progress and they tell the story to their children's children. The sense of wonder and joy remains. As an, an angel has spoken to them, the angel spoke of physical birth. But there is also a spiritual dimension, the joy that breaks upon us when we finally grasp that Jesus loves us in spite of ourselves, forgives all of our sins and past failings, and takes up the residence in our lives. Then that initial joy melds into an enduring joy of companionship with the Lord. Father, thank you for the joy of Jesus' birth and the joy of the new birth that we can experience day by day until we see you in glory. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We light the love candle also represents the angel candle. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3:16. This is probably the most well-known verse in the Bible. It's flashed in ballparks and memorized in Sunday school classes, but why is it so beloved? Well, it talks about God's love for us. He sent his one and only son that Christmas morning because he loved the world so much. Not the physical globe, but the people within it whom he created. In all of our suffering, our struggles, and our sin, he still loved us, and that is why he came to earth. We can see his love for this people in his gentle words, my daughter to the woman who reached out and touched the hem of his garment, in his encouragement to Peter, who had betrayed him, uh, feed my sheep, Peter, I have not given up on you, and in his compassion to the crowds who he saw as sheep without a shepherd. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. Luke 2.38 
2, 11 to 14. The herald angel is given the honor of making the first joyful proclamation of Messiah's birth, who is God's only son. Jesus came on Christmas morn in, <laughs> through the Father's love. Jesus demonstrated his love for us by dying on the cross for our sins. This will always be the greatest love story of mankind. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your um, unconditional love for us that envelops us and saves us, that fills us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and includes us in the momentous plans of your kingdom. Thank you for always loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Couple came to Bethlehem, expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you. We're coming soon. There was no room for them to stay. So in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Starshine bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came many miles to journey along for you. Head to the place at which you were, that frankincense. Sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too.
And now we light the Christ candle. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, we read, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. But you'll enjoy that uh, candle lighting and our family and siblings read these uh, wonderful scriptures and their wonderful meaning. Well, Merry Christmas to all. Uh, in Christmas, until I offer a gift to someone, right? There's a gift. I have this surprise. It's a wonderful bag with a lot of goodies inside. So uh, there's some surprises in there too. So uh, whoever answered this correct trick question will get this prize. Are you ready? Uh, you raise your hand uh, if you know the answer. Okay, listen well, okay? Who was Jesus' cousin's father's wife name whose baby also named start with the letter J okay I, I see uh, yes you yeah the orange shirt or the, the orange baby what's the name yeah Elizabeth here you go <laughs> all right good job Lisa <laughs> Well, uh, welcome to uh, Christmas Eve service. Uh, I hope uh, you, you get a sense of what uh, was uh, repeated in the lighting of the candles. Uh, there was emphasis on uh, hope, peace, joy, and love. And so the question comes to you is that, uh, you know, what does hope mean to you? What does peace, joy, and love mean to you? Uh, so I think everyone desired this, uh, especially in Christmas Eve, uh, in Christmas celebration. We always talk about we have hope, we have peace, we have love, and we have joy. Uh, but what's th what's that mean? And so let's let's go go into a thought of what these four significant mean. Why Jesus is our hope? Why Jesus is our peace and joy and love? And what does hope for you mean uh, today? You know, I was hoping I don't have to preach. Uh, if you don't know, our brother Simon Ho was supposed to come up and preach today. Uh, did you know that? But unfortunately, just yesterday, uh, he was tested positive with COVID. So here I am. I'm hoping I can fulfill what Simon has planned so this is a message that, that Simon uh, has prepared, and so I'm trying to fill in the spot to convey what hope, peace, joy, and love means. So I think we all try to strive for hope, like we hope to lose weight, like I do. Uh, some of you want to hope to find a wife, a, a husband someday. Some of you hope to graduate uh, with good grades. Uh, and so far. So we know, I think, what uh, hope try to strive for in everyone's life. Uh, ultimately, I think sometimes we look for things that uh, we desire uh, and we hope for it, we get it. So we hope for peace, we hope for joy, we hope for love too. So there's a lot of things where we don't know it, but there's always something that in the future we hope it will come true, right? Uh, you hope you will have a good life. You hope that uh, you'll be happy, that you find a future uh, spouse, that you will just be a ideal family life that you dream of, 
uh, maybe the world paint us a picture of uh, what, what a good, happy life looks like. So there's a lot of things about this thought about hope. So just pause a moment. Uh, what does hope mean to you? Then there's peace. Uh, we need peace. Do you need peace? Or another way of saying peace is rest or vacation. I need a vacation. <laughs> uh, we haven't taken a vacation for two years, uh, you know, because of COVID and, and uh, situation. Uh, we plan, we want to go away. You can't because of COVID. Uh, things change now. Uh, trying to book a place uh, w uh, is hard. So we need rest and peace. Maybe that's the idea of think what you think peace means. You want to relax. Uh, we need peace to uh, calm ourselves because emotionally we're maybe just tense. Uh, maybe mentally you're just tired. Uh, you so many things concern, worry about uh, in your life. There's, 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 there's need of peace because you're fighting. Maybe, maybe you're fighting with a, s a spouse, a sibling, a friend, BFF. And what's the opposite of peace? I was, I was thinking about what could be the opposite of peace? Anyone could give me an answer? Chaos, exactly. There, there's a lot of chaos in this world. Uh, what, uh, what, other, what, what is another opposite that we think of besides chaos? What? Conflict, yeah. Conflict or confrontations. Do you like confrontations? No one would like to confront you, or I don't like you to confront me, right? Uh, that's no peace uh, at that. Riots. This past couple of years, been a lot of riots, right? Did anyone join a riot? Join a protest? Join, join something because you want peace, right? Uh, there's, there's things going on you're not happy about. You're, you're, you're mad about. You're, you're just upset. The world needs peace, uh, the way that we think about peace. But you know, we in this world will never find lasting peace uh, the way that we think of. Uh, you can't find peace in this world, the thing that the world try to obtain. So just hang on to that thought, what peace means to you. And then there's joy. Can you describe joy? Anyone can give me a description of what joy means? What would make you happy or excited? Anyone? Did you hear some ch one church? There was a wall, and they break it, and they they found almost uh, six hundred thousand cash in it. I won't tell you what church is that. <laughs> is is that a wow blessing <laughs> in disguise? Uh, Maybe you get excited. You ever seen a video of uh, of a mother new a boy get, uh, and and they show a video of the gender revealing gender. Uh, you pop a balloon and and then there's a blue or pink color, right? And then you see them all yelling, excited, or a college student uh, on the on the computer, click on a, uh, the school they hope to get in, and they got in and they they got all emotional and cry in tears. Is that is that the joy, excitement that we think of, or when you are happy, joyful? Well, the world look at Christmas joy in in many ways. Uh, the world kind of celebrate the Christmas. Uh, a lot of consumption and commercialization uh, in trying to make you feel happy. How many are happy spending a lot of money to buy gifts? Uh, for your friends. The receiver are pretty happy, but I think the one who spent the money <laughs> could be not that happy. They think they are happy. They could uh, buy gifts for someone they love, but it's a sacrifice. It, it is something that uh, you have to save up money to enjoy life 
maybe that's joy to us. But then again, I, I want to tell you, maybe the world definition of joy could not be satisfying. Uh, it will not last. So we hang on to that idea, what joy means to us. Then there's love. Hmm. Who can define love? Who, who knows what love means? Can anyone tell me? Give me a definition of love. Hmm? Well, he, listen to this. I, I always thought this love, Christmas love song was interesting. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you give it away. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Merry Christmas, I wrapped it up and sent it with a note saying, I love you. I meant it. Now I know what a fool I've been. But if you kiss me now, I know you will fool me again. You know that song? <laughs> by, by Wham or George Michael, who, who uh, sang it, uh, and people seem to like it. They, they resonate. They, they, they sing it with emotion because they fell in love and then they got heartbroken and they like to relate with that song. Is that what love means? Um, what the world tells us about love? So talking about love, maybe I'm not talking about you loving someone, but maybe Love means someone loving you uh, in, in the truest sense. Uh, how do we learn how to love in the first place? Maybe we, we learn it observed by a family, a parents. Uh, God forbid we, watch, we, we learn love by watching movies, uh, romantic movies, uh, K-drama love movies and <laughs> maybe those are not quite clear about what love and you can't buy love right money cannot buy love they try we try to buy love with money buy joy with money buy peace with money buy hope with money even right I once said to my daughters I, I'll buy you an iPad if you get straight A's uh, and they still hold me to that promise because they got good grades, they got straight A's. So I still owe them iPads in that sense. Well, does that mean to buy, buy love, buy things to make people happy? Well, unfortunately, uh, to an extreme, some people search for hope, peace, love, and joy the wrong way, harmful way. You know anyone like that who so desperate Decides, decide what they want. They, they, they really want hope. Nothing wrong with hope. Nothing, nothing wrong with wanting peace. Nothing, nothing wrong with wanting joy and love in their lives. But how we go about it? Sadly, there's reality that we see people go in the wrong way, like abuse, addiction. Uh, or even maybe pretend, lying. You ever pretend or know someone who lie the way they think they're all that, but they're not? They, they're desperate, right? They want to show maybe they're happy. Uh, maybe they want to show that they live in a good life. Just look at uh, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok, right? I know it's TikTok. I like to say TikTok, okay? <laughs> All right? What do they do? They fluff up, they fluff up their happy, loving life. Right? Uh, they they set up the big scene, all these colorful rainbows show, showing their drinks and, and, and their, their lakes uh, in the beach. And they say, oh, look at me, I'm happy, I'm wonderful, I'm amazing. 
Is that how we try to desperately pretend that we are showing people we're okay? When we're deep down inside, we're not okay. Deep down, there's, there's trouble, chaos, right? There's, there's, there's uh, tension, there's, there's stress and worry and fear. A lot of fear these days, right? Especially these two years. We are going through a lot of fears because of COVID. And so, and, and one, I remember one story. Uh, this young couple were dating uh, and the parents didn't like the, the boyfriend that the daughter were dating. And the parents said, this boy is not good for you. Uh, what happened to the response to the parents' forbiddance? The story tells us that the boyfriend and the daughter murdered the parents because they, they love each other. They, they want to be together. So they plot and murder their parents. Is that what love means? So desperate. Uh, do you, 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 you decide something and then we go in the harmful way. We numb, we numb ourselves. We keep drinking and drinking. Some people do to, to feel that, to avoid the, the void of pain. So there's a lot of wrong ways to look for hope, peace, joy, and love. But Christmas. Christmas changes everything. Christmas now tells us what hope means, what peace means, what joy means, and what love means. And so I want to tell you what Christmas means is because of Jesus Christ is the real hope, the real peace, the real joy, and the real love. Because Jesus says, he is with me. It's our theme, Emmanuel, God with us. So our theme today is with me. Jesus says, I'm with you. I'll be with you. I will show you what hope means. I will tell you what peace means. I will tell you what joy means. I will reveal to you what true love means. And so, for example, Jesus says in John 14, 27 about peace. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So what Jesus is saying, the peace that this world tries to offer you it will never last. It's never, it's never going to be obtainable. You think about it. Uh, world peace. If you, you, you hear about the pageants, the, 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 the running uh, for Miss America, <laughs> what, what they say, I want world peace. Uh, I want to tell you, the war, there will be always war in this world. They will never stop. Uh, we are at war, other countries are at war, and we think World War One, World War Two, World uh, Three uh, will be complete. Uh, we will we we will solve all all conflicts. No, because this is the world we live in. So, uh, so I want to propose that this kind of world, the, that the peace that the world offers, will ne never be attainable. Uh, that's why even we as human. We fight, even loving parents, even loving brother, husband and wife, Christian husband and wife, we're still going to have conflict on this earth, right? Because we're not there yet until we meet God one day. Because this world is sinful. This will continue to reveal to us that, that we are a sinful uh, world that we live in. So Jesus says, I'm offering you this peace that this world cannot give you. This peace will get you right in the right relationship, uh, back into, no, uh, back into pers right, the right perspective. 
And so this piece is, is to ask you to get right with God first. One of the messages of Christmas is that we're not at peace and we need to get right with the one true God that will give us the true peace on earth. And then when you have, have God's peace in you, then we can have relationship, good relationship with one another as best as we can because God giving us that strength to know what that peace means for us. And then joy, uh, one of the songs we sang today, or uh, inexpressible joy, and then it's, uh, in First Peter 1, it says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him yet, you believe in him, and are, you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Wow. Knowing, knowing Jesus is, this, this joy is inexpressible. Is, is you, you try to, you try to uh, explain it and define it, but you can't. Only when you encounter and know Jesus yourself, you can truly know what that means. And, and brothers and sisters, I experience that joy. I can't, I can't really tell you what that means until you personally know Jesus just you know, personally, intimately, then you would know. I can, I, I can try as best to, to get all smiley and excited, jumping left uh, one, one feet and, and leaping, but you just, you're just a bystander of what I experience. And my prayer to you is that I want you to experience this joy that you can have with our Lord Jesus Christ, that only you can truly uh, know when you know Jesus Christ personally. And then we hear about the love, and the scripture read, John three sixteen: for God so loved the world that he gave his one and true son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And then Jesus says, John 15, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. And the greatest love that God showed us is Jesus died on the cross for you. That's the ultimate love story. Uh, I can't die for you on the cross. Uh, your neighbors cannot die for you. Only Jesus Christ can die on the cross for you. Because why? He has the power to take away your sins. I cannot, if I die for you, I can say, hey, your sins are forgiving. <laughs> That's silly, right? No one can die for you and say your sins are forgiven, but only Jesus Christ can say, declare that truth and promise because he's the son of God. He is the, the God Almighty, the Prince of Peace, the Father that we know of as Heavenly Father. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Can you imagine? You just don't have hope. You just don't have joy. You just don't have love. But God says you can have all, the, the, all this wonderful gift that he offers us. I, and not just one, not just two, but it's full. No one can offer that to you. I cannot. I cannot give you hope, uh, give you joy, give you peace and love. Uh, you may want it. You may expect it. I, I'm going to fall short. I'm going to disappoint you. Your spouse is going to disappoint you. Your BFF will disappoint you. You, ex you think you... They, you I want joy in my life, so give it to me. <laughs> no, I can't. She, he or she can't. Christ uh, also will give you that kind of hope, peace, love, and joy. So this is the gift. The Christmas is about this gift. Jesus Christ himself. Do you know him? Do you really know who he is? That he is your savior. He is your Lord. He is 
your Redeemer. Yeah. Uh, why it's so important that we need Jesus? His uh, shocking, shocking truth. We are sinners. Do you know you are a sinner? Well, I'm not that bad. Prom I promise you, you are bad. I am bad. The Bible says that no one is good. No one is righteous. Not even one. And the whole problem is because Jesus came is because we have sinned. We are sinners. Because the world uh, inherited the sin of Adam and Eve. The first man, the first woman. And so God cursed this world through suffering, through uh, diseases. So you might wonder, some of you might wonder, why COVID? Why we are going through COVID? Well, because of sin. Just like why we have flu, why we have malaria, why we have diarrhea, why we have cancer, all that because from the very beginning, we have sinned against God. But thank God, he sent Jesus Christ. Christmas is the reason that we celebrate and worship and rejoice because Jesus came to cure the sin nature ourselves. So I, I invite you this evening. Know Jesus. Invite Jesus into your heart and life. How? Just say, admit you are a sinner. Confess and repent. I have sinned. And, and the only one who can save me is Jesus Christ on the cross because he died on the cross for us so that we can have eternal life. That's the great promise. Eternal life, we go to heaven one day. That's our hope. And he'll come, a promise to come back again to redeem us, to bring everything into completion on his second prom, uh, coming as our Lord and Savior. So God is with you. Jesus is with you if you know him. And you could go through life with true hope, with true peace, with true joy, and true love. And this is the gift Christmas offers through Jesus Christ. So let's rejoice and let's celebrate with uh, the, some of the couple more songs and then we'll pray and then and after we pray we will we will uh, I will tell you your age group we're gonna uh, have refreshments for you we're gonna have some uh, fellowship to, uh, discussion with you so uh, each group will have a designated place to go to I will assign to you after we sing a couple more songs as, as we close. Thank you, PK, for uh, the message. Um, let us stand together as we sing the song and respond.
Sing silent night, just the voice. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child. And so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly
Almighty God, we give you praise and thanks, for in this holy night you sent us the gift of your Son. He is the Lord of all, the Savior of the world, wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. On this holy night, may our hope be restored. May your peace be truly felt. May we be drawn into the mystery of your love, and your spirit fill us with joy overflowing on this holy night. Join our voices with the angels. Let us praise the one for whom we have waited, the newborn King, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Well, please be seated. Uh, it's not over yet. The second part now is we're going to have refreshments, uh, but we encourage you to uh, come back Sunday to worship with us. If you see the uh, room assignments, First and second grade, uh, fifth grade, go to the basement chapel. Uh, uh, Eva Wang Simo uh, will be there. If you don't know who she is, she's right there. So you'll be in the chapel basement. I, at the chapel level will be the 25 years old and up adult group. So you, if you're 25 and up, you go to the chapel, and Brian and Dave Ho will be there to be your facilitators. And then in the A building, there's the college and the E building, sorry, E building is the college and 24 year old. So if you're 24 year old in college group, you go to the E building and Daniel Ma uh, will be there uh, waiting for you with refreshments also. And then the upstairs of E building will be the high school group. 
so your high school, go to the uh, second floor of the E building. And then the A building attic, the junior high group, Uncle Willie will be there also be your uh, facilitator. So, okay, any questions? Uh, please, uh, the young kids group, by 6 p.m., parents go and, and pick up your, your kids uh, because uh, Ms. Wang will also start with the 7.30 uh, service. So there will be refreshments there for you uh, wrapped, and then we we'll will encourage you just, just to stay there too because uh, we will we'll be have some fellowship and discussion uh, with your each group, okay? So God bless you and enjoy your evening.